Hey, yo, King's the S tier, you know? We should all reroll for him. Like, look at that shatter, boy. 12.5 S tier. That's the highest shatter in the game. Actually, I've been using King, and I think King sucks at shattering. Huma is now the goddess. Yeah, she's only got a 10 A shatter, but have you seen her dodge attacks? Also, shit all sucks. That was actually me. <laughs> at least half of it anyway. Hi. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Lace. Today, we're going to be talking about Shatter. We're going to be talking about King versus Huma versus Shido versus all of the other Shatters in the game. And actually, I'm going to be talking about the theory of Shatter, which is really, really interesting. Yeah, at the risk of sounding like a nerd, screw you guys. I'm going to talk about Shatter. I'm going to talk about all the theory crafting behind it and why Huma's dodge does so much, which combos are actually good for the King and why Shido is not as bad as everyone is making her out to be. And so to things off as always let's start off with the theory and then go into practical kind of sounds like you're studying a subject over here the theory of uh shattering and so the first thing that i want to show you guys is this page right here yes it is in chinese however i do have a transcribed version over here uh thank you machine translation and essentially this is an evaluation at launch of the different shattering weapons so we've got the shield we've got the rosy edge we've got the scythe as well as the chakram ring now the way that they did this was actually a lot of manual testing and there was no doubt of mine involved, I believe. And if I go to the source of the article over here, which is essentially a forum, but the TLDR is that they tested the normal attack string, which is what is flat A. So this one over here, ping A. And then coming back over here, we've got burst shield, which is essentially like your skills and stuff. And then at the very bottom, the stars and how they affect each of the shield breaking capabilities. Now, if I hop over back to this thread over here and I go back to page one, the most important piece of text is this one right here, which is to reiterate again, in the setting of Tower of Fantasy, the shield breaking mechanism actually has nothing to do with your damage. It is only dependent on your attack magnification, your skill damage. And this person doesn't mention it here, but he also actually means shatter as well. So what I'm saying is that if I go to Huma over here, what shield breaking capability each character has is dependent on this over here, the 77.7%, as well as this one up here, the shatter stat, which is for Huma, 10. And so what I'm saying right here is that if you have a Molten Shield V2 at level one versus Molten Shield V2 at level 100, they are actually going to shatter the same because the ratios are the same. The ratio of these guys actually do not scale up at all. And then the shatter also does not change unless you actually get some constellations, stars, whatever you want to call them for them. And so what this means is that the best shatterers are the ones that can deal out as much percentage skill damage as possible over the shortest amount of time. And by now, everybody has accepted that Huma has incredible, incredible shield breaking capability on the dodge attack, this one right here. And the awesome thing about this is that it actually aligns with the theory. 226.3% attack. You don't see this kind of multiplier on many, many skills. If I go over to the king, you can see that his dodge attack is actually half of that, right? However, of course, this is not the only deciding factor of the break we've also got the shatter stat up here 12.5 versus 10 but 12.5 versus 10 and then 226 percent versus what was that like 110 percent it is quite clear that huma is going to be winning with the dodge attacks however unfortunately we are not always dealt a perfect hand like for me i lucked into a king and a huma so i can actually test it and talk about this stuff and unfortunately i don't have the shit off so that means that i can't do much testing i can't show you too much footage about her but i do have something lined up so just hold on and so so if we come back over to this one, I want to talk about what exactly they tested, what exactly they found, and kind of like the rankings and where each one stands. And so to kick things off, we have the flat A, which again is the normal attack chain. However, I'm pretty sure in this one, they are evaluating the spin to win on the great sword. But the TLDR for this is that the great sword is the best for spin to win. And then you've got the shield normal attack in axe form and then sickle and then chakram over here. However, if we have a closer look at the percentages, you can see that Kings actually goes up to 183%. Now, this is because of the aerial combo. And I think this supporting text makes it all very, very clear. It's very easy to be interrupted in my own experience. Yeah, it's very, very freaking true. I hate his aerial combo. And so, for example, Shield Axe over here, we've got 143% average multiplier per second versus the wheels, the chakra room for 126 what that is saying is that the axe is going to be 13% better than the chakram with a normal attack chain. And so after that, what this guy actually 
actually tested was your QTE appearance, which I believe is the discharge and then the weapon skill as well. And the result of this was actually a whole bunch of different combos over here. And so the Chakrams actually placed the highest in terms of the QTE. The burst is actually massive. However, it does take up two dodges. And then we've got the shield axe and the fire sickle coming in at second and then ice sword coming in at third. And then last of all, we have this rising star section, which is essentially talking about each of the weapons if we had extra stars on them. And so what's incredibly interesting is that they don't mention the shield axe one star. And that is because the shield axe one star actually only grants you extra damage, not any like extra ratio providers or shatter stat. However, for Huma, the interesting thing is at three stars where she gains, I believe, extra damage equal to 4% of the user's current HP. Now, what they did was that they did a quick simulation on about 300,000 HP. And they're saying that essentially every time we are going to be proccing this three star effect. So if I come over here, you can see while in shield form, branch slash dodge attacks deal additional damage. Every time we do a dodge attack, we're going to deal extra damage. And that extra damage is going to have a multiplier of 411.4%. Now, these ratios may not be 100% correct because I do believe there were some tweaks to all of the characters, but you can see why this shield axe at three stars gets even more cracked, right? You got your 226% on the dodge plus this one over here. You're going to be breaking shields all day. As for the greatsword, Meryl, as well as King with the scythe, we do know that they get the shield breaking efficiency by 15%. So what that means is that we take this value up here and we plus 15% to it. So if I was to do that, 12.5 multiplied by 1.15, that is should be getting us 14.375. And so for those of you who do have the SS shatter on King, this value should be what you're seeing if you do have the S1. And that, my guys, is how shattering works. Coming back over here, we also have the Chakram. The Chakram Shiro is a really interesting one because at C1, she actually does get extra elemental shattering effects. However, it's C3 where she gets the extra shatter. But I would not, my guys, I would not sleep on the C1. I do think it's really good, especially because full bloom, it freaking instantly shatters pretty much, right? However, the CD on that bad boy is actually quite long. It's on the skill, I believe it's like, yeah, 45 seconds. And so it's here where I actually want to do a minor demonstration, right? So if I come over to NA, her level 40 axe that I have not juiced up, unfortunately, what I'm going to show you is that her focus smash, even though it's only level 40, it has 518% attack. And so this is absolutely going to crush all shields I come across. I'm going to go up to this guy and I'm going to do exactly that. So I'm going to smack him a couple of times and bam, bam, bam. And then you can see his shield is already almost broken, but I'm going to focus smash, tick, 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 boom. And there goes his shield. His shield is completely evaporated. Now, I am using the Fortitude trait, so I am going to actually keep it on and show you the other weapons and how they perform in shattering. So my guy's shield is back up. I'm going to use my Huma E, and then I'm going to spin, clap, 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 spin, clap, 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 and that is going to be shield broken. So it took an E into, sorry, the skill into the spin twice to actually break the shield. And then last of all, I'm gonna show you King. So as you can see, I do have his discharge ready and I'm going to slap it right here. And then I'm actually going to do something different. I'm going to use attack, 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 hold attack. And then his shield is gone. However, what you did notice is that the discharge is actually going to be popping up with more enemies. So that means that it actually scales better the more enemies there are. And so my guy's shield is back up. And for some reason, there is somebody attacking my mob that's really freaking weird dude and so here's another one of these guys i'm gonna go clap him trigger his shield first uh wrong guy okay and then i'm gonna show you again auto 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 charge attack and his shield is about 50 percent auto 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 charge attack oh i yep that was a skill issue but you can essentially see right like it's the a3c the auto 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 charge attack or normal 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 charge attack that is actually the real juicer the real shield breaker of king now the other alternative is as we saw in that post it was actually aerial attack so i'm going to trigger this guy real quick bam i'm going to go into aerial i'm going to go click 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 and you can see i just got knocked down and that is why i hate the aerial attack right because although it does actually have really good shield breaking capabilities it is really really unsafe and so i'm going to go click 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 and i still get booted around okay you know what it's not even worth showing you because I just get clapped so much. So I think the only place that it is worth using is in Fantasia when you actually get the time stop. Otherwise for King, I do think that the best combo is actually auto, auto, auto into this chain thing right there. 
I'm gonna do it one more time. However, remember that this is with the Fortitude trait. And so it is a little bit inflated, but they all are held constant. I've been testing with the Fortitude for all of them. The other reason that I don't really like using King's aerial attack is because usually you run King with Samir, right? And with Samir, you also want to be using that stamina. And if I'm using that stamina on the aerial attack, then what am I left with with Samir? I could do like the ground combo, but ideally I would be doing a ground combo with King and then doing a lot of DPS with the Samir instead. Now I'm gonna go into Fantasia again and then, oh, just got smacked in the face. Okay, so let's try that again. I'm gonna dodge and then auto, 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 and then the chain skill. And you can see that it's actually taking up 60% of his shield just in one combo. Auto, auto, auto into the charge. And that is going to take up a lot of his as well. Okay, I'm about to die. So, I But yeah, hopefully that kind of illustrates essentially all of the theory that we've been talking about and showing you that it actually does work in game. What a lot of people actually do like doing with King is using the Mortal Coil, the skill to break shields. I am actually going to advise against that because of the insane damage that this thing actually does. And so yes, what I am suggesting for King is that you actually break the shields with A3C or N3C, whatever you want to call it, and then use Mortal Coil afterwards so that you can get the full damage. Because my guys, especially for a skill, this is a really, really fat juicer. Next, Next, I've got a little bit of footage to kind of show you, illustrate it a little bit more in Bygone Phantasm. This is one of my friend's runs. He is running a Samir, Nemesis, and King comp and at level 149. Now, the shields are triggered, and what I want to show you is that he is going to be using that exact same combo. Uh, he does the slam, but that's okay. So he goes into Phantasm. Watch this. He's going to, I'm going to actually slow this down a little bit. He's going to auto, 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 and then you can see the chains come out. It's the chain sickles that is really the juicer. And then he uses the E afterwards. Now, if I play that back, watch all of their shields. By the time he's finished with the chain sickles, it's already shield broken. And then he uses his E to deal 58K, 38K, 26K damage to the enemies. And so this is an instance of where he claps all of their shields with just one discharge from the king because they're all stacked up and their shields are instantly getting decimated because of the splash from each of the explosions, right? And what I do need to remind you guys is that even though he does have a C1 King here, so plus 15% shatter, the damage, the extra damage from that C1 does not give him any extra shatter performance. And the other thing to mention is that he has no fortitude here and he st is still able to break those shields so fast. Look, those shields are about at 60%, 15%, and then he's just going to do the A3C, the N3C, and pop those shields almost instantly to go into a skill for giga giga damage. And so my guys, next I'm going to show you some Shiro gameplay. And if you guys do know Dreamy, then shout out to the girl Dreamy. But essentially from Dreamy's gameplay, I want to show you guys the optimal shield breaking combo. And the combo for Shiro is actually auto auto charge attack. So you can see the shields come up, auto auto charge attack. And she's going to do it again, auto, auto, and then charge attack. And you can see that the shield is depleting super super, super fast. And then after she breaks the shield with the auto, auto charge, she is going to then go into the skill because the skill does giga damage. It goes into the E, into the dodge, dodge, because that is going to throw out the chakrams. So she's just doing it right here and you can see bounce, dodge, bounce, dodge, and then all of these chakrams are flying around. Now, something is really interesting that people think is really novel is if you use the hologram projector, you can have like up to about 30 chakrams bouncing around. What I do want to say about that is that if you do manage to get it going, the damage is decreased down to 35% because that's what the hologram projector does. So I'm talking about this guy right here. And if you guys have played like Maple Story, it's essentially your shadow partner. But as you can see, this is a 35% user damage, final damage multiplier. So what that means is that the shatter is not going to be multiplied by 35%, it's going to actually be at 100%. So if you do want to do like a Giga Shatter, it is actually completely viable to go ahead and use a hologram projector and throw out all of those chakrams to get 100% break efficiency, but only 35% damage efficiency, okay? And this is again, remember, because you're doubling the Wanderer's amount of attacks, you are actually doing the damage first and then multiplying the final damage by 35%. So that means that we have the original ratios on the projector's attack. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it's the best use of the hologram projector because, you know, it could be a giga DPS thing. But my guys, that is without a doubt an option. And without a doubt, 
I'm gonna say that Shitter, especially in the global version, considering she also actually got buffed. Shitter, my guys, she is not bad. I'm gonna show you guys these ratios over here and I'll probably edit in like the ones that are actually in game. She actually got a really good buff and because she's getting buffed on these ratios, that means that she is going to be doing more shatter, remember? However, my guys, with that being said, that is going to bring us to the end of the video. I do wanna give a quick summary as for all of the weapons and how I feel about them in terms of shatter capability. I still do think that the scythe, the king's weapon is going to be the S tier weapon for shield breaking and damage. That is the very, very important context and damage. And that is because one of his insane ratios, two, you also get the DPS resonance with him, and three, taking into consideration all of his skills as well as his Cs, he is going to be the highest DPS, which is in the context of things like Bygone Phantasm, Wormhole, that is what you need. I previously gave Huma a B on the tier list. I take that back. I was wrong. I was very, very wrong. I do think that she is at least an A+, plus, if not an S, because in the context of when you're a tank, you can actually run the Huma and contribute to shield breaking with the fortitude. So having or not having the DPS, having the tank resonance instead is actually a good thing. However, of course, that utility is limited to co-op and more group play. Whereas like your scythe with the DPS and all of that, that is applicable to everywhere, which is why I would say that King is at this point only marginally better than the Huma. What I do have to mention is that her shield breaking capability on the dodge and just her play style in general, it's a lot safer. It's a lot more comfortable and it's just a lot easier to play than your crow you go on the a3c or the aerial combos there's a freaking like you get hit out of it so much and so what i would say is that king has the higher skill ceiling but huma is like way easier to use has the easier floor and then lastly in terms of shido i am not going to give an evaluation on shido simply because i have not used her enough however from the footage and from the theory she does not seem that bad man when i do have to compare her against like your crow or your Huma, then I would say, yeah, she is kind of like a step below, but she is not nearly as bad as everyone is making her sound. And I admit that, I admit that I made her sound really bad as well. Come on guys, this is a last minute addition. I forgot to talk about Meryl, but essentially the TLDR is that Meryl is extremely good in her spin to win. However, the spin to win actually does consume stamina. And although that is her best, it is going to compete with the likes of Samir and other units that use that stamina gauge for attack. However, if you do manage to run her with like a DPS and a support or a DPS DPS that don't actually use stamina for their attacks, such as like your crow, maybe you just jetpack cancel, actually that does use stamina now, I think, then by all means go for it. However, that is the weakness. And so you guys know about the weakness. If you can work around it, she's going to be fantastic. And so my guys, as we close out this video, I do want to say, I think that global is in an incredibly balanced state. I do think that every single weapon has its place in the game and that all of these tier lists and whatever, they're all null and void. If for example, you don't do the A3C with this scythe or for the shield you don't even do the dodge attacks then your Huma is a freaking trash tier unit or for example with the Chakram you don't use the skills or you don't do the A2C I kind of get why you're complaining because you're not using her right and so my guys that is going to be it for realsies I'm going to wrap up this video I am losing my voice I do want to have your opinion did this all kind of make sense and does it align with your experience so far I know that was a little bit dense but it's all demystified it actually makes complete sense to me I hope it makes complete sense to you guys and so let me know down in the comments below if you did enjoy this video or found it kind of helpful then please consider leaving a like on it subscribing to the channel and turning on that notification bell however as your girl uh, shido once said all good things must come to an end so thank you guys so much for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video bye bye